Hi guys, we are going to be making this vertical splash bag by Parker on the porch. This is what it looks like. This is the five by seven size. Do that one. And I made this one. And I made this one too over here. I'm going to be using these to store my kids' card games. It's a cute little thing. You can see the game through the front. I bought my daughter a few games for Easter, so this is going to be one of her Easter presents. I just put the game inside of there so all your whole game can stay together. And I'm going to store it in this little bin right here that I got from Joann's. This is what it looks like. Okay. And so I'm going to make a bunch of these and put their card games in it. But these are the brand new cards. I bought them a couple new card sets. They have some different ones. So this is the 5 by 7 bag. So I'm going to use these and then just store it in there. So I'm going to show you some of the materials that we're going to use. My splash bag, this vertical splash bag, is not going to be used near water. So I'm just using regular fabric and it's more, I'm using it more as like a peekaboo bag, but we are gonna make one together and we are gonna use something that makes it an actual water resistant bag. You can use Oxford fabric or PUL, P-U-L. It's fabric that people use to make the um, diaper covers. So this is PUL from, I got these fabrics from Sahara. Um, they were an online um, business, but they have closed since, but that's where I bought these. This is um, Oxford and this is PUL, I believe. They're both waterproof fabric. So we're gonna be using these to make our splash bag. And then you also need a clear vinyl right here. This is 12 gauge vinyl. And I bought it on the roll from Joann's. They have um, huge rolls. It kind of looks like this. I'm gonna move you a minute. It likes, looks like this and they all have different colors. It, it's on these big rolls, see? And each color, the outside, it's labeled at the Joann's. Each color has a different number, and the higher number you go, the thicker the plastic is. Um, I would not go lower than 12. If you go lower than 12 and you're flipping these bags, it tears um, out of your bag. So we have determined that you need to at least do 12 gauge. Okay, so that is what we're gonna using, 12 gauge. I'm probably gonna use some fold over elastic, and I'm going to use a D lobster clasp. It looks like this. I'll talk about it when we get to it. But let's get to our machine and get started. I'm going to show you how to put this together. Okay, guys, I'm on my machine. I have my 5 by 7 hoop, one sheet of tear away. I'm going to go ahead and do the first step, which is always to stitch the placement step directly on to your stabilizer. I'm going to do that. I'll come back and show you. Okay, guys, this is what that placement stitch looks like. Let me take this off my hoop so I can show you a little bit right here. Okay, looks like that. We're gonna focus on this top part right now. We are gonna be placing our zipper between these lines. This center line should line up with the center part of your zipper right here where your zipper teeth are. I just put mine between these two lines and I'm usually good to go. You want your zipper pull and your zipper end on the outside of your stitch lines. That's how you know you have a big enough zipper. You can have a super long zipper if that's all you have. We cut off the excess later. You just have to have it big enough to get past your stitch lines so the foot of your machine can get by here without hitting either the pull or the end. So this is fine. Now if you want your bag to open from this direction, keep your pull over here. If you want it to open the other way, just flip your zipper where your poles over here okay so I'm gonna just line up right here at the very edge of the stitch lines right here you see that I'm just gonna line up all the way across once I'm evenly across where I can just barely see that you can tape either side or you can hold it I'm just gonna hold as it as it stitches the next step goes ahead and stitches right here tacking your bottom part of your zipper to your stabilizer then it jumps your zipper teeth and it goes ahead and does a line up here I'm gonna go ahead and run that I'll come back and show you okay guys this is what it looks like it went ahead and tacked down the zipper on the top and the bottom you can see the stitch lines it's down to your stabilizer so we are good to go now we're going to be using these placement stitch lines to determine the size of our fabric okay so you are going to need several pieces of fabric let me get here you are going to need six to be exact you're going to need this piece right here 
and you're going to need the liner piece right there. Then you're going to need the top part right there, and then there's a liner right underneath it that we place. And then you're going to need the back of your bag, and then this is considered the front of your bag that peeks, peeks through. And then you're going to need your piece of vinyl too. So we are going to go ahead and show you how to measure that. I'm making the 5 by 7 If you're making a different size, then this is just how you figure it out. So you're going to need four pieces of fabric the same size. Two for here, two for here on the bottom. So I go ahead and take my ruler and I measure from my zipper up. And then I kind of add some because we're going to do a flip. So I just add a little. You guys know I'm not very frugal with my fabric. I'd rather have too much than too little. Okay, so you measure that way, and then your width, of course. You need four of those. They can be different fabrics. I have all four of mine the same. I have this one, and then there's the liner, and there's the bottom, and there's the liner. Okay, and then you're going to need a piece of fabric that is your front and back, so from the bottom stitch line all the way to the top stitch line, and then your width, you're gonna need one for the front, which ends up being the peak fab, the fabric that peeks through the clear vinyl, that's called the front, and then you're gonna need a piece the same size for the back. It can be a different color, whatever you want. So I have that piece right here, and I have another piece right here, okay? And then you're gonna need a piece of that vinyl, and the piece of the vinyl needs to be the size is from right underneath your zipper and this doesn't fold so you can be a little more exact on here so you don't waste but right underneath your zipper down to this line you need to be a little bit below that line and then the width that's how big of a piece of clear vinyl that you need okay so the very first step that we're going to do now that we have all our fabric we're going to go ahead and place this top portion with the liner at the same time so how we do that i'm going to flip my hoop over you can see that I wrote underneath right here and then this is the top so we know what the top is okay so if you have directional fabric I don't have directional fabric for these but if you do then you're gonna remember well neither one of these really look directional okay so what you're gonna want to do let me put hearts here I really should use directional fabric on these so it's easier but so what you're gonna do say the hearts my hearts go both directions that's why it's not it's not directional but you want your direction to face towards you let's see if i do this go ahead and do we're going to go like this you're going to want them to be basically like this this to say this is the right direction facing you say hearts we're going this way like this you're going to flip it upside down and then you're gonna place it right above this line right here, and you're gonna tape it. So when it does a line right here, it's ultimately gonna flip up like this, and you're gonna want the direction going towards you, okay? So that's how you would place directional. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place this here. I'm gonna tape this where they're on the underneath of our hoop. You have right sides facing your hoop, right sides down. Okay, and you are gonna tape this like this. Okay, now you're gonna flip your hoop over to the front. You're gonna place it the exact same way, okay? So if I had the right facing me like this, you're gonna go ahead and flip it over like this. The right side of your fabric is facing down towards your hoop. Once it stitches the next line, sorry, my dogs are barking, you're gonna flip it up so the right side's gonna be facing you in the end, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this. You can hold this top, because you're on the top of your hoop, or you can tape it. I'm gonna tape it. The next step is gonna just stitch one line across right here, tacking the liner to your stabilizer with the top as well. And then I will show you what we do next. I'm gonna go to the machine and run step three. Okay guys, it went ahead and stitched that one line like I said. You can see that it tacked down the underneath liner and the front top fabric. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take this tape off. I'm on the front of my hoop. You're gonna flip it up now. This is what I was talking about, flip. Make sure your fabric gets past these stitch lines. If it did not, then you need to seam rip this in, get a bigger piece of fabric, okay? I always have excess fabric, okay? 
So you're going to flip it up like this. You're just going to, I'm going to hold that because it's easier to hold that one. But the bottom one, I'm flipping my hoop underneath. You're going to basically be doing these at the exact same time. So let me get this tape up. Okay. You're going to pull this up. You just want it straight and flat so it looks nice. And then you're going to tape these down. Okay. Like that. I'm just going to tape this top fabric. You're on the underneath the hoop, so you're going to want to tape it pretty well. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to flip it over. Now I'm going to go to the machine, and while my machine runs, I'm going to just kind of hold this out of the way. The next step is going to stitch right around that placement up here. It's just going to stitch this curve, tacking the two fabrics down to your stabilizer, okay? So I'm going to go run that. I'll come right back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like right here. It went ahead and tacked that down. You can see that it did the line all the way on there on the top of your hoop. That's the front top. If you flip your hoop over, it did the same for the back. You can see that I just keep this all taped down. You don't want it getting into anything, so make sure you have this taped well. Um, and I also was gonna remind you, when you put this back on your hoop, make sure that this fabric didn't flip up or anything. I always check the underneath of my machine before I run that step. Okay, now the next step is to place this clear vinyl right here. So I have a piece of clear vinyl right here. If your vinyl is super wrinkly, mine gets wrinkly because it's all like squished up in my corner. I go ahead and iron it, but I take like double of my fabric, like just a woven fabric, and then I just kind of iron over it really quick and it flattens it right back out so it's not all wrinkly. Mine gets really wrinkly, okay? So you just want a big enough piece that goes ahead and fits right under your zipper past this line and the width has to be bigger than here, okay? So I'm gonna go to the machine. The next step's just gonna go ahead and tack this down in the square and I will come back and show you what we do next. Okay, I'm on my machine. I just wanted to show you I line it up right here underneath the zipper. I have a big piece. I'm going to cut the excess off later, but I did want to let you know you will see the thread on this in the end. So if you don't want it to be super bright and stand out, make sure to use a thread color that matches your zipper. And I'm going to show you the difference. So on this one, I used a hot pink on my yellow zipper so you can see that hot pink really brightly. On this one, I use the hot pink thread, so you don't notice it as much because it's the same color as the zipper. So I just wanted to point that out so when you're picking your thread colors for this next step, step five, you made the choice on what you wanted it to look like. Okay, I will show you when it's done. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and tacked down your vinyl. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off this bottom part that we don't need this, just some of this extra to get it out of the way. Okay, you can see just like that, There's, it's still there. I just got the bulk out of there, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and place this bottom piece. We're gonna do both the liner and the bottom front piece at the same time. So I'm gonna flip my hoop upside down, okay? Now you're not really gonna see this. I. It's hard to see it, it's this bottom in here, this bottom inside like there's this there's a piece on the inside too so it's really hard to see it but I'm gonna go ahead and place it like this I'm gonna tape it down now I have the right sides facing the stabilizer or the in, yeah the stabilizer then what's gonna happen when you flip it towards you that would be the right side you want the right say if hearts were going this way towards you, you if you're flipping it like this, you want them to be facing you when you flip it, okay? So if that makes sense. So right sides down, okay, like that. And then remember when you put this back on your hoop to make sure that this doesn't flip up or anything, okay? Then you're gonna flip this over. You're gonna do the exact same thing on the front. You're gonna go ahead and place right sides down. So if this, you're gonna want the right sides towards you. So if this was hearts towards me, then you're gonna go ahead and flip it upside down. You're gonna put it right below this line, like that. So once it stitches that one line, tacking these two down, when you pull this down, the right side's gonna be facing you, the directional fabric, okay? Oops. 
I'm gonna tape this. You could just hold this piece um, since it's on top of your hoop. But I'm gonna go to the machine. It's gonna run that one straight line and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's what it looks like. It went ahead and did that line right there. There's the top of your hoop. Here's the underneath of your hoop. Stay on the underneath of your hoop. Go ahead and pull your tape off. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did up here. We're gonna go ahead and pull this down, make it flat and smooth and secure it with tape. Okay, so that's all perfect there. Now it's gonna go ahead and do that same shape. It's just gonna do this curve right here, tacking it to your stabilizer. So go ahead and flip your hoop over. Do the same here. You can see when you're flipping this, if your fabric's directionally the correct way, if it's not, seam rip it and go ahead and place it the correct way. If it's not, if it can't cover this placement stitch, that means you didn't have a big enough piece of fabric, so go ahead and seam rip it and put a bigger piece of fabric, okay? So those are some things you can do if you did mess up. This I'm just gonna hold like this. I hold it like this while the machine does the curve. I, I get it tighter and smoother, but you can get it placed just right and then tape if you would like. The next step is going to go ahead and just do that curve. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. I will come back and show you. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and stitched there. That's what your back looks like right there, the underneath of your hoop. We're looking good. Okay, now we are going to put the front of our bag on. So what you're going to do is open your zipper. I always open your zipper when you put the back of your bag on like this it's going to go ahead and seal it so you have got to open this zipper now you want it open far enough that you can flip through this hole but not so far that the foot of your machine will hit your zipper pull so just like that you can see your um, foot of your machine is going to be running along this placement line several times and you don't want it to hit that pole okay so we are going to do a couple things. If you want to add anything that hangs off your bag, this is when you do it. So you can see I have this up here. I put this here so if my daughter wants to clip this to her backpack and she could have an Uno game with her at all times, she could do that. I thought that would be kind of cool. So she can actually use this for other things. And then I put a little cute... Um, thing right here. I plan to make a charm and then I can use the ball chain and put it through here and have a little charm hanging if I want. If I wanted to go ahead and label this Uno, I could put a little charm and put Uno on it and so it says Uno. You can see it through the clear, so I don't know what I'm going to add yet, but I just added that so I have the option later. Okay, so what you go ahead and do is I'm going to take this D swivel lobster class. I'm using fold over elastic. You can use ribbon. You can use a vinyl piece if you want, a piece of vinyl. Um, you could go ahead and make your own bias tape and do it. What you're going to do is you're going to, I'm placing mine along the top. I kind of want it to be in the center, so I just kind of eyeball where I want it. I'm going to place it like that. I'm going to go ahead and tape it. Now, depending on how long you want this to be, if you want it to be really long, like your fold over elastic really long, you'd place it this way more, so there's more of the fold over elastic inside your bag. If you want it shorter, you'd place it this way. You do need to have enough room that when the foot of your machine gets by here, it doesn't hit your metal, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that like that, and I'm just taping it. You want the hardware on the inside of your bag. Everything you place, on the inside of your bag gets kept. If you place it on the outside, it's gonna get cut off, so don't do that. Now I'm gonna place that little loop. I'm just taking fold over elastic. I'm gonna go ahead and loop it. I have the pretty right sides on the outside, so wrong side together like this. The right sides on the outside. Now, depending on what you wanna see, for example, this one had a little paw print and I wanted to just see that one paw. I went ahead and I placed that very exact. I went ahead and so if the little paw was right here, that's what side goes down because this flips and whatever you have facing down is what you're going to see on the front of your bag, okay? So keep that in mind when you're placing anything right here. If you're placing your um, business tag, a lot of people have little tags that have their business name on it, you would want your name facing down, okay? So I went ahead and did that. 
Now, that's all I'm placing on this bag. I have my zipper open. I'm gonna go ahead and take the print of my bag. If it, you wanted it the right side, you would do it like this if the hearts were facing me. Remember, the design faces you is the right way. Then you flip it over so right sides are together. That's how you do your directional fabric, okay? So I'm gonna hold it. You can tape it if you're a taper. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it. It's gonna stitch completely around all of your placement lines, the whole outside of the bag, several times, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and sealed this top part of the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and flip our hoop upside down. We are gonna take our last piece of fabric and we are gonna be putting it face down. Now, so right sides would be facing you, the directional, the hearts would be going this way, your fabric, then you're gonna go ahead and flip it like this, okay? So, now we're gonna go ahead and tape this down, just make sure you get past all your placement stitches. It's gonna basically stitch the exact same thing it just stitched, it's just gonna leave a whole opening down here that we can flip through, okay? So go ahead and get this on and go ahead and stitch the very last stitch step and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. Here's the top of your hoop, here's the bottom of your hoop. You can go ahead and take it off now. Ah, all this tape on here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my stabilizer off the outside for now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this way. You can see that there's no stitches right here, so you need to cut at an angle. I cut like this up to those stitch lines without cutting any of them. And then I turn and cut around. Now we're cutting off our excess zipper right there. Okay, I'm gonna cut around. Oops fabric folded over so I'm gonna just cut it deep, deep, deep. okay I'm gonna cut some of this off right here okay I'm gonna find the liner which is these two the, I know these are the liner because there's the hole between it so those two we need because we're gonna use those to help close that hole and I'm just gonna cut off this excess right here okay now you're gonna go ahead and flip through this hole it's um a little bit difficult, only not that the fabric's thick, but you have that vinyl in there, and this is the vertical. The horizontal is a little easier because you're flipping kind of more through the side. This, you're flipping that whole length of the bag through this hole, so just take your time. This is the smaller size, too, so... It just takes a few minutes. I'm just kind of flip it through. Okay. My other three bags did this too. It took a little bit. It like crumples in on itself, so it's harder to flip it. Now I'm gonna take this turning system, I'm just gonna kinda of get these corners out a little bit. Be kinda of careful not to poke through the fabric, but my hand doesn't reach all the way down there because this is longer, okay? I'm gonna come over here, like that, all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and flip there. Just get all your corners out, okay? Like that, looks great. Now your hole is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use that peel and press tape. It looks like this. Our peel and stick fabric fuse tape. The way you do that is you have these little lines right here. I just line up next to those lines. And you're just gonna go ahead and put it right along those lines like this. I'm gonna just tear it, it tears. It's probably gonna stick to your fingers, okay? I'm gonna head and fold that in to the hole. 
and you're going to fold this side into the hole. This is why you have that extra fabric there. So you can kind of just sandwich it like that. So I'm going to take a few of these wonder clips. I'm just going to go like that so it kind of stays where I want it. Now, once this is pushed on, the sticky part of that side should basically adhere to that side of your fabric. And then when you peel it, you have the other sticky side. So I'm just going to get it started. Okay. So I'm just peeling off and sticking those together. And I'm peeling off and sticking more together. I need to do that. I do it a little bit at a time and then the whole thing doesn't pull out and stick to your fingers. So it is a little more helpful. Okay. So then you can just push those together. You don't need your clips. Okay. Like that. Now the hole's closed. There's no opening there now. So, and it looks great. Okay. Now we are going to take off the stabilizer. This is tear away. So the way I do it is I get it started by opening the zipper. If you didn't have that zipper open, you know, the step that we opened the zipper, you wouldn't be able to open right here. So that step's really important. Okay, and there's a placement stitch right here. I'm just gonna cut so I can get it up. And then I just try to tear this along the top. And try to get it clean like that there and then I'm going to pull this part down see you just want to get all this tear away off so you don't see it so your bag looks nice and clean okay so I'm just going to pull it I have to use my tweezers and some of that okay like that I'm going to cut any of these placement stitches that you have in a couple places. Now I need to get this excess right here off. Okay, a lot of people write messages in YouTube and asking where some of my materials come from. I try to tell you as we're doing the video, but as well, if you go at, um, you're watching the YouTube video right now, underneath it should say my name, like, um, it says like Angela Perry, I think. Underneath it says see more. If you click that see more, Underneath, there's a huge list of all the materials I use. Like if you're wondering where I get my stabilizer, if you're wondering where I get my scissors, if you're wondering where any of my stuff comes from, including the design link, it's all under there and they're all links so they can bring you there. So please look there. Okay, so now we're going to flip through this hole right here. We got all that cleaned off. That's what it looks like right now. So go ahead and flip again. I'm just going to this up this clear vinyl kind of sticks to itself so you kind of got to pull it so I'm going to use my tool again I'm just going to try to get these corners out my corner there's my corner Put this corner and kind of flatten it out okay get it all pretty like that okay and there you are there you have it here is your a splash bag it turned out super cute there's your zipper and you can put stuff in here like I'm gonna put this game okay so if you are wanting it to hold a phone or something and be splash resistant then you do need to use these fabrics that we used here we used pull P-U-L and we used the 12 gauge vinyl, okay? 
If you don't care if it's not going to get wet and you just want like a peekaboo bag, then you can use any fabrics like I did on these other ones. Okay. I hope this helped you guys. I hope um, you guys make a bunch of cute ones and post them in the Parker on the Porch Facebook group. We always love to see what you guys are making. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. If you like my videos, go ahead and please subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to be notified when a new video is made and uploaded, go ahead and click on the little bell. That will notify you when another video has been made. And I will, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.